And when we trust God, we trust him with everything, not just part of our life. And I know, we all know what, what Julie's been through. But thus far, God has taken care of you, see? And he'll continue to do that. But we think about, I guess I call it monetary things that's on this earth. Now, we have to live, you know. We have to survive. But God says, I'll do more than that. And he does, and he will. And he, he, he never changes. But um, I want to say it's good to be here tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and be a part of the service. It's always a, a excites me, and it's a blessing to me to be able to stand before you and share from the word of the Lord. And I appreciate all of y'all being here tonight. Um, I want to talk about blessings and um Count your blessings. Now, you, you remember the old hymn, Count Your Blessings, Name Them One by One. And today, as I was working and just thinking about this and been talking to the Lord about it, you know, if we were begin to count our blessings one by one, how long would it take us to do that? You know? Because we're blessed beyond measure. God even reminds us of that. Beyond measure. Every minute of the day, every hour, you know, but we think about blessings. And you, if you think about this, and notice it, you'll notice it, I know you will from tomorrow or next day, even tonight or whenever. How many times do we use that word in conversation? Whether it's uh, thinking about something or talking about something to a friend and they'll say, you know, I, I've been blessed. But it goes beyond that, and we understand what they're saying. But then we pray, just like tonight, we pray and we ask God to bless Michelle. We ask God to bless Charlotte and the others on our prayer list, you know, to bless them. But how, how do you want them to be blessed, you know? We want them to be blessed, first of all, with God's healing. And then we ask, you know, that the doctors, whoever's doing all this stuff, we ask that God would bless them with the knowledge. So there's all sorts of blessings in our life. Every minute of the day, we get to thinking about it. And listen to conversations and think about this word, being blessed. What does it mean? What is the meaning of being blessed? What's the meaning of counting our blessings? Well, look at um, Matthew 13. Uh, and I'm going to skip around that chapter, but the main verse here is verse 16. And um, right here, we, and we know... and. Jesus taught the disciples, as we understand, with parables. And it's amazing how he used parables back in this time, and they still apply to our lives. Amen? They still apply to our lives that we can understand. That some of the words may be different. I had to look up a word in this one of these parables, and I knew probably what it meant, but I wanted to be for sure. But anyway, look at verse 16 of chapter 13 in Matthew. He says, but blessed are your eyes. And we know our eyes are blessed. Um, I had to go to eye doctor today. I didn't have to go. I got to go. I was able to go. And I thank God for it. You think about it. You never have but one set of eyes, do you? You're not going to have another set. So how many times do we take for granted our eyesight? How many times we can just thank God for blessing our eyes? That we may see things, you know, visually. And sometimes we ask God to bless my mind and my eye that I may see his will, don't we? That's one thing that we can look at. But anyway, he says, but blessed are your eyes for they see. And your ears for they hear. And you think about your ears. Haven't been to the hearing doctor lately. Probably need to go. Maria can probably vouch for that. But... <laughs> And over the years, being around equipment and stuff, you know, and I don't hear as well as some people, but I hear better than others. So I'm blessed to hear. But anyway, he says, For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear have not heard them. And when I read that scripture, it's like, it just opens, it opens the door to us, Brother Richard, like, 
God allows us to see and hear things that some people may not ever. Think about, and I know I use different things, but think about deer hunting. And it's not about going out and just harvesting a deer every time. And Maria, she's got to where she'll go with me when I hunt in the evening time. And we may harvest a deer once in a while, but we go to enjoy the environment, to see God's blessings of nature. And so in saying that, we get to see things that some people may never see. And we get to hear things. Well, Maria hears them anyway. I may not hear it all. But we get to hear things that some people never hear, you know. But that's okay. God blesses us in a lot of other ways. But that was one of the things that come to my mind. But he says, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Now we know about the parable of the sower. And that, that is in the beginning of this chapter. Where Jesus, um, he, he went out in great multitudes were gathered. And he was on a ship and he sat there. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And when you read parts of the Bible like this, can you actually close your eyes and visual what this may have looked like? What a blessing it was just to see this. If you, if you think about ships and things, and I enjoy stuff like that. While we were in Myrtle Beach last week, um, we took the grandkids to uh, just a pirate show, whatever, and it, Dolly put it there, and it's nice for kids, and we enjoyed it. And the grandbabies, we call them our babies, they really enjoyed it. But you get intrigued by these boats and these ships and things, you know, and we actually saw one on the river there one day. But that is amazing. Can you imagine Jesus sitting he got out where, you know, he could, I guess, you know, in his mind or our mind, we may think that he was getting out there because all these many people. And I don't know that it says how many is a multitude, but that's a lot of people. With but anyway, he's out there, and he's speaking to them. So here he says, you know, he talks about different parables at the same time, but he's speaking to them, and it says, saying, Behold, a soil went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and some fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and, for, and for forthwith they sprung up, but because they had no deepness on the earth. But then he says, and then the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And in verse 7 he says, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them away. Like a weed, you know. But other fell into good ground and brought, and brought forth fruit from a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. But who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now he goes on to another parable here. But think about sowing a seed. Now, how many here tonight has ever planted a garden even? How many has planted just a tree? We all have done of some sort. I remember in, in grammar school when, you know, you would take, I think we took a watermelon seed and we took our milk cartons and we planted it and we set it in the window. And that was amazing. That was probably the first thing I ever experienced of something that you actually did and it growed. But see, we couldn't make it grow, could we? We couldn't make it do anything. We could put it there. We could plant the seed. But God had to make it grow. But well, that's kind of the same way in our spiritual life or our Christian walk. You know, and God says that we're here to plant the seed. And he's saying that we should plant the seed in other people's hearts. You see, because like he was saying, there's some that may never see what we see from God. There's some that may never hear what we hear. But the thing about it is, it's all open to everyone. It's our choice. It's a choice we make. We want to see what God has for us, or we want to hear what he has to say to us. And I'm a firm believer now, God speaks to our hearts every day, if we're listening. I may be hard of hearing, but I can hear the Lord speak to me. You know, and he speaks in different ways, doesn't he? You know, and, and everybody can relate to this, but here he, he kind of, he says, you know, in verse 10, the disciples came and said, but why speakest thou to them in parables? He says, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Well, 
he's talking about some that it's not given to. There's mysteries. And there's things that we may never understand, especially on this earth. We don't understand sometimes why, just like the COVID-19 or whatever, we may not understand why that came. Why did it appear? Why, why did God allow it to appear? But you know, there's a lot of heartbreak that went, has gone on through it, and still some going on. Just like Eddie, he, he was sick with it just last week. You see, but why did it come? But sometimes we take that and we say, well, God, you, what's the word here? You bless me through it. God blessed us through it. And saying that, he blessed us with healing. He blessed us some, maybe, maybe some needed their, uh, God's attention or God needed their attention, you know. There's a lot of ways we can look at things. And I always try to say, well, you know, Lord, this may not have went the way that, that Timmy wanted to go. But as long as it went the way God wanted it, I'm happy. You know, it's how we look at things, you know, and, and, and our, daily, our daily walk, you know, and our jobs and everything. And, and I'll be the first to tell you, I get, I get tied up in things of work because I want people to do their best. I want people to do the best to get better at what they're doing. But some people, it's a choice. You can't make anybody do anything, can you? God can't make us serve him, can he? He can invite us. But on the other hand, Satan can't take us away from God, can he? Well, see, that's one of the things that some people don't understand that don't really know God that well. It's like, well, Satan done this. No, he didn't. We allowed him to. We allowed Satan to steal our blessing. We're talking about blessings. And just think about how many times that you use this word in a daily conversation, you know. And there's true meaning to it. If we're a Christian and we love the Lord, there's true meaning to this word blessing. But it can mean a thousand different things. Amen? It can mean a thousand different things, you know, like... Uh, even though Julie has been where, you know, she wasn't able to work. But God has blessed her in a way that she continues to eat. She continues to have her needs met. Amen. God continues to meet her needs. But he didn't say, Julie, sit down and quit. He said, keep going forward. Never give up. Pray without ceasing. That's one of my favorites. Pray without ceasing. Because... God changes things. But he says, I will bless you unmeasurably. You can't imagine. We can't go that high in our, our mind as to know how much God really blesses us every day. And I've heard Brother Danny preach, and, and, and he's taught me a lot over these past 25 to 30 years about blessings and about things that could have happened had God not prevented it. You know, just like going down the highway. We go on a two lane, how far are we apart from a car when we pass, you know? And some of these things we take for granted, don't we? We take for granted that God's going to take care of our needs today. He's going to keep us safe, but we pray and we believe, and that goes, that goes a long way. And I can tell you that our prayer chain in our church body works. Prayer works because... It changes things, but if you don't ask, you may not ever receive. And I'm not saying that we should depend on others to pray for our needs. God said that we can pray for ourselves. But as a Christian family, we should be concerned enough to pray to God to bless our church family and whatever need may arise today, whatever need may arise in the next hour or the next week or whenever it is. And that makes you feel good to know that we have a church body that loves the Lord enough to pray for one another. We may not, may not ever always know the complete need, but God says he does, doesn't he? Amen. Well, see, um, I wanted this to mention something to you tonight. And talking about our church family. And I know if you look at this building, this building to be here when we're gone. 
unless God comes back first. Amen. But you see the blessings right here. Do you see God's blessings? The air condition is nice, isn't it? It's real nice. But could we have it without the Lord? I don't think so. And, and back up. We back up a few years. I want to share something with you. I don't know how many years ago it's been. But probably, and, and I don't get no credit. God gets all this credit. Don't get me wrong. God is the one that brought us to where we are in our facility. He's the one that brought us where we are. I know that people have been very, very, very obedient in tithing. And God will bless you in your tithing. Won't he? Amen? God will bless you if you're obedient. But it was probably the first year that I was chairman on the board. And, and I asked God, I said, Lord, you know, I want to be the best that I can be. And I can't do it without you, Lord. I need you to guide me as I guide others. But God puts people in there, and, and we've had some, some great boards of stewards, deacons also, but the stewards is I'm, think, I'm thinking about and talking about. But this certain year, our funds wasn't where we thought they needed to be. But I said, that's okay, God, because I know, I know, I know that you'll take care of the needs we have because we have a church body of born-again believers that's obedient to your word. So what I'm saying is it wasn't long after we bought the property over here, and that's great. But what God showed me was this. This church is God's church, and we need to maintain it. We need to keep it up, and it was Nobody's fault, but over the years, things had happened, you know, deteriorate weather. So we set out to take care of God's church. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in this. It doesn't matter if you have a Model A Ford, if it's 50 years old. If God gave it to you, you're going to take care of it, aren't you? You're going to take care of it. You're going to treat it like it's brand new. Because if you don't, how you going to get anything else? Do you believe God's going to bless you with something else if you don't take care of what he gave you? I don't believe so. But I'm just saying that. So what we set out to do was just start maintaining our, our building here. And again, rem remind you that the funds wasn't really there. So we set out to build these Sunday school rooms in here. This one in this next room and Brother Jimmy's class because... It was kind of a disturbance when you walk through there, and there wasn't no other way around. But anyway, what I'm saying is, we set out to do that. We got a quote on it, and when we got the bill for it, it was more than we set out to spend because we'd done extra. And I can remember this. Brother Danny may remember it too. That one night in that meeting, we were sitting there, you know, and the board agreed we have to pay the man and the, and the, and the guys that, that done this for us, they need their money. So we approved the pay them. I'm on one end of the table this long, and Brother Danny's on the other end. And he looks at me, and he says, Now, Tim, we don't have the money to pay that. And I said, Brother Danny, that's not our concern. Remember that? And before the end of the week, the money was there. The money was there. And it was paid. And that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. But what I'm saying is, God bless you if you have faith and believe that he will take care of what you need to be doing. I don't care what it is. As long as it's rightfully doing of what God in God's eyes, he'll take care of it. But look, and, look at what God has done here. You know, we, everybody worked hard to restore this sanctuary. And we don't know why the tornado came and tore this part off. We don't know why the water poured in with like five-gallon buckets the next morning on the brand-new pews and carpet. But I said, that's okay. God gave us those. He'll fix them or he'll give us some more. Amen? 
But we could have worried and fret and sit down and cried. I mean, we felt like it in our heart, didn't we? We felt like it. But I said, God did it one time, we'll do it again. But I want to share something with you about that. Some know this, some people don't. But it was amazing to me. And Brad Boyd, Brother Danny and myself, we met with the, the adjuster from Tifton. And when we came in here, and you could look up <laughs> through the, the roof that was there, and you could see the rafters that was shifted and out of place. You could see a lot of things. And so the adjuster says, in the end he says, we want y'all to fix the church back better than it was. How many adjusters or insurance companies ever said that? Not to me. Not to me. If you, if you wreck your car, they may help you get something of equal value, but they're not going to say, get a new one to replace it with. No. But see, that's God. That's blessing. God is blessing. So the other thing I want to tell you is that the best way I know how to say it was this structure was in bad shape. Now, what I got, I said, sometimes we may not know the answer to things that happen. But right within a few days, I knew the answer to why God tore this roof off. Because it needed structurally replacing a lot of it. This wall right out here, it wasn't a wall. It was just some bricks there. You know? And I'm not throwing off on, on the structure. It served a purpose for many, many, many years. But it's like anything else. You have to maintain it. You have to re, refix it. But that was God's way of saying, hey, we're going to fix it better than it was. We did. We fixed the rafters. We fixed the sign out front. God provided extra money to put that nice sign out there. Not everybody has that. Some churches do. But that's a blessing. That is a blessing from our Lord. The other thing is that I've, I haven't talked much about. Now, Brad knew it at the time after it happened. But we had had this church re-shingled. And the shingles went bad. When I say the shingles went bad, that rough stuff, that little gritty stuff, was washing off. One day I was here, and the, and the cleaning lady, Miss Betty, was here, and she said, is there a certain type of flower or weed blooming? I said, I don't know. What do you say? She says, come out here. I want to show you something. And all the way around the building, it looked like salt and pepper. You know what that means? When that stuff goes off of the shingles, Soon the shingles go away. Then you're down to the plywood. Then it's wet and it goes away. So I said, okay. We know that shingles have a 30-year warranty, whatever they say. Long story short, I was in the process of trying, and this was like a six-month period, trying to get those shingles replaced. But in my mind, I'm saying, I don't want no more of them shingles. They're no good. Why would you want them? So God says, we'll fix the whole roof with a new style of shingles. Amen? Amen. God's blessings. You see, God gives us understanding. Sometimes we may not recognize it every time. Just like sowing the seed. It depends upon how you sow the seed, where you sow the seed. Now, you can't Beat somebody over the head with the word and expect them to get it. Some people you may want to. <laughs> I know Brother Danny, <laughs> he probably has been there. And, now, and on our job, you know, and, and, which Maria, she, she don't know that I'm a good and patient person on the job. but <laughs> may, It may not show every time. But, you know, God shows us things. And God expects us to understand some things. But he helps us to understand things. He helps us to learn things. Without God, we wouldn't know how to do anything. But when we're born, he teaches us how to, to eat, to whatever we need to do to survive. You know, that's our instinct. But you see, just like this structure, there was a lot of other things I could tell you that God fixed through that. 
because it served its purpose. Again, I'll tell you that, but it was in bad shape, and we didn't know it. It was covered up. We didn't know it. But look at the parking lot out here. That's one of our latest projects. I call it God's projects. Look down here at the land, the church land, that property. That property, we didn't know. Georgia Power approached us, paid us over half, over half the money to, to do this paving project. Isn't that amazing? You think about numbers, but numbers are not important to God. They are to us a lot of times because we need to live and we need to eat and we need to buy gas, you know. But where does the money come from? It comes from our Lord and Savior. No other place but there. But he said, as long as you'll put me first in your life and you'll do your best to obey my word, we're all, we're all sinners at that time. We fail. But that doesn't mean we should just keep on falling. But God's going to pick us up. He's going to give us new strength. He's going to bless us. Right? So you think about God's blessings, but the one thing that he says in that one verse is that we see and hear things that some folks may never see. They may never hear it. But we pray and we believe that they will. Now, one thought that comes on my mind is uh, we all have family members that are lost in one way or the other. Whether they've been in God's house, whether they were raised in, 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 in church and not here anymore or not where they belong. And you think about that and you say, well, Lord... I pray for them daily. I pray without ceasing. But what's going to change it? You know, what's going to get our attention? And God has gotten my attention many times. I'll be the first to tell you. I have failed him many times. But he's got my attention many times. And I thank him for it. You know? Well, God blesses in mysterious ways sometimes. And we may not see it, we may not hear it at the moment, but we will. We will, sooner or later, we will understand. But um, the, the, the other parable that he talks about, you know, it's like, well, in verse 12 it says, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. What's abundance? Is that blessings pouring out? Is that our cup running over, Brother Danny? That's abundance. Now, aren't we blessed in abundance every day? Miss Mary, you got one screw loose, but the rest of them still tied, amen? amen. Ain't that right? <laughs> the rest of them still holding her. You wouldn't be walking on that rod. Is that right? See, and my dad, he taught me a lot of things. He was a Christian man. But sometimes we have to look at the positive side. Don't see just the negative. Don't see what I call positive and negative. God says everything's a blessing. It may be in disguise. You may not understand it today, but you might tomorrow. But then what is the key to that? He says, trust me. Trust me, and I'll take care of you. Trust and believe, you know. We trust him, and we believe God's going to meet our needs. Julie's trusting, and she's believing right now. Even though sometimes Satan will send the word from your best friend. <laughs> your best friend may say, well, man, it's been two years. You ain't ever going to get nothing done. But what does God say about time? Time is not a vessel. But patience may be. How many times do you pray for patience? That's a blessing. Well, see, the older I get, the more patience I have. Maria don't believe that, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but now, some things, I am guilty of saying, hey, this is the way that, that I'd like for it to be done. Now, tomorrow, I don't want to tell you that again. See, I expect you to know it 
once I tell you. But some of us have to be told more than once, don't we? God has to get our attention over and again sometimes, doesn't he? But that's okay. At least he's still getting our attention. That's a blessing, amen? amen? That's right. So if we go through this life, we're going to have problems. We've got to maintain our Christianity. We've got to maintain our eyesight, our ears, our body, you know. Anything on this earth has to have maintenance. Your car, your house, whatever it is. And God gives us sense enough to understand that things get aged. Man-made things is going to wither away. Didn't he say that rust and, and decay? But he says, you won't. We may not be here always, but we'll be in heaven. We'll still be there. But God says, you know, in his promises, I'll make a way. Julie, he says, I'll make a way. He's made a way already, hasn't he? He's made a way for two years. You see? But our old uh, human nature, as my dad would say, our human nature is that how am I going to make it? How am I going to pay for this diesel fuel that we're burning up every day to make a living? But so far, God's paid for it. Don't ask me how he's doing it. It doesn't matter how he does it. Has any of y'all had to walk anywhere today? No. Now, I'm not happy about it because it's nonsense. But I'm trusting God to take care of it. I'm trusting God to change some things that need to be changed in my eyes or in our country. You know, we, we need to pray for our country daily. Pray for our leadership daily. If we're not doing that, we're not doing our part. We all have a part in this, in this place we live. We all have a part we'll realize it or not. But without God's blessings, we would certainly be lost, wouldn't we? We would go hungry, wouldn't we? And I told somebody yesterday, you know, we was talking about, <laughs> and, and, I, and I say, well, God says if you don't work, you don't eat. But think about the sparrow, the birds. You know, God says I provide the food for you, but he didn't say I'd drop it in your mouth, did he? That's just the way I believe. It's in God's word. He says you got to go out and get it. Now, I understand people that's not able to go out and get it. There's, there's a lot of people that's not able, you know. But God makes a way. you got to see it. you got to hear it. you got to believe it. Let's all stand in as we dismiss. Father, again, we thank you for your word tonight, Lord. And, Father, I pray that I've, I've said some things that you've laid upon my heart. I've shared some things, God, that, that will make a difference in our life, Lord. Because we know we need to be refreshed daily. Because we're still having that old human nature. That's what we have. That's what we were born with. But we trust you, Lord, to change our ways. To help us to realize all of our blessings come from you, Lord. So bless us now as we leave this place, God. Take care of us as we travel. Lord, again, we pray for all those who are having surgery this week. And, Father, we pray for those who can't be here tonight, those who are not well, that you would go to them and bless them with healing. Bless Brother Danny daily with the strength he needs, Lord, to continue on. And bless our church body, for we sure do love you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.